I'm in Tom Whiting's studio at the Brush Art Gallery. Uh, Tom is a digital artist. We'll be talking about that and what that means to be a digital artist in a moment. Tom, you haven't been an artist by trade. What is your background? Well, I'm a commercial real estate appraiser right now. Uh, I've done lots of, I've done IT, I've done uh, uh, database uh, consulting, and I've done uh, janitorial work in, uh, in nursing homes. But you really started uh, art in high school at, at a pretty young age. You, yep. got, you got interested in it. How, how did that go? How did that get started? Well, actually, it was uh, junior high school. Uh, Miss Marshall, uh, the art teacher at Muzzy Junior High in Lexington, she took a special interest in me. Um, she noticed I had talent. She told my parents. My, my parents encouraged me to do art. Uh, I, I enjoyed doing it anyway. And, um, and then in high school, I, I eventually sort of majored in art. Uh, I was able to take uh, elective you know, extra elective courses in art uh, that most, I, I think most people wouldn't be able to take. I, I, I had my, my, well, yeah, I took extra art classes. And then I continued on to uh, Framingham State where I uh, was an art major, art history minor. Um, I actually left before I got my degree, but <laughs> uh, I completed all my art classes and all my art history classes. How, how important was art back in those days? It was very important to me. It was my, it was my life back then, actually, back, especially in college. I, I, Back in high school, I used to do a lot of different things. I used to hang out in the computer room and I taught myself to program. I was, a, I was on the football team and on the track team and stuff like that. But in, high, in college, when I got to college, I, I concentrated on art to the detriment of other things <laughs> uh, sometimes. Uh, I, I, I loved painting, I loved drawing. Uh, I also loved ceramics. Uh, I, was gonna, I, I was concentrating in ceramics by the end of college. And um, when I left school, I was going to become an artist. I, I, I dropped out of school to become an artist and uh, actually become a potter up in Maine. But uh, I also met a girl and uh, uh, what well, we fell in love and I decided I was going to marry her, and I also decided after I had dropped out of school <laughs> that I needed to get a job that paid real money because I, I, I know I, 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 I knew that being an artist I wasn't going to be making a lot. So I got a job at Fidelity, which I hated. Uh, it had nothing to do with art at all. And uh, eventually I left there and uh, went went back to my uh, summer job from, uh, from college, which was working at a nursing home. So, but, and then you worked your way through a number of different things and, and currently you're still an appraiser. That's right. So you're a digital artist and uh, what, is, what does that mean? Now, how, are, how are you different from uh, a painter, you know, water, watercolor, acrylic, or oil painter? Uh, I'm only different in the media that I use. I, I paint on a computer screen instead of a canvas. I don't use real paint. I use uh, software instead of paint. Uh, I use a stylus instead of a brush. But it's it's all very similar. Uh, I'm, I'm when I work in the studio, I'm tied to a particular computer. I, like it's it, it's hard to move my computer around. Uh, but when I'm out in the field, I use a tablet and. It's just like using a sketchbook, um, almost exactly like using a sketchbook, depending on what what I'm doing. Except I can, I have my whole my whole tool set with me wherever I go. I have my paints. I I have my watercolor paints. I have my oil paints. I have my acrylic paints. I have all my pencils. I have airbrushes. Uh, I can do anything anywhere. What is your process for digital art? You know, how do you, how do you start? And, and, and 
ultimately get to a finish, finished work? Uh, generally, I start by uh, taking a photograph or doing a sketch. If I take a photograph, then I do a sketch from the photograph. Um, and from there, the process is very much like doing regular acrylic or oil painting. I just paint on the, uh, the, the sketches on the computer screen. I add a layer. In, in digital art, you can put different layers. Um, so I keep my sketch in the background and I'll paint over it with one layer. If I'm doing a portrait, I tend to do a bunch of layers. I do one layer for, for the skin, one layer for the hair, maybe another layer for the clothes and another one for the background. Uh, if I'm doing a, a landscape, I try to do it all on one layer if I can, just with my, well, two layers, one, one layer with my sketch and the other layer that I'm painting on. Uh, I, I, I don't like to lose the sketch if I, if I can help it. But sometimes I, I combine all the layers when I get beyond a certain point and just combine everything. Just, um, but so it, it varies a little from piece to piece, but um, mostly that's the process. What specific software do you use and, and why did you choose it? Um, I, I, I mostly use Sketchbook Pro, which is a, it has a very simple interface. The interface doesn't take up a lot of room on the screen. Uh, I, tr I, I tried um, Photoshop. A lot of art, digital artists use Photoshop. That The learning curve on that was tremendous. and I, I eventually got over the hump, but the, the interface takes up a ton of the screen. With Sketchbook Pro, I can... I can get rid of the whole interface if I want to, and I just have the, the drawing surface or the painting surface, uh, and I can call up the tools on demand. Uh, I also use a program called Variable Pro on my PC, uh, which allows me to blend colors almost exactly like actual, uh, actual pigments and, 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 and paint on textured surfaces. When you're working on a computer, does that constrain the size of the final work at all? It, it doesn't constrain the size. The only thing that constrains the size is my, is my printer. My, my personal printer prints 13 by 19 maximum. If I want to do anything bigger than that, I have to send them out to a printer. Um, for shows, a lot of the time, I'll send stuff out to the printer because I like to produce large pieces. What is the hardware that you use? You you mentioned uh, having a tablet when you go uh, when you go out and about. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're at a desktop, you have a fairly large display. Yep, I, I have a I think it's a 27 inch display. Uh, it's the the PC that I use is called the Surface Studio. I have the first generation one. Uh, it's just a little block. It basically has like laptop components in the block. It has a special hinge so my screen can go at any angle. Uh, it can go down to almost flat for, for drawing or it can be pretty vertical for painting. Uh, and, and it's a touch screen and you, and you yes. mentioned also you have a number of different uh, styluses that you use for for actually doing the the drawing and the painting on this on the display right. unfortunately each device that i use uses its own proprietary uh, stylus technology and so for the surface uh, studio i use a microsoft surface pen but i also have a third party pen that is a little bit lighter weight it feels more natural the, uh, the barrel of it is a little bit thinner, feels more like a paintbrush. Uh, for, my, uh, for my tablets, I have an Android tablet by Samsung, and they have S Pen technology by Wacom. Wacom is, a, uh, they're, they're like the standard for, uh, for digital artists. Uh, if I could, I'd have a Wacom tablet on my desk, but uh, they cost, way, way too much for me right now. Uh, but anyways, back to the Android tablet. I, I use uh, some styluses by Statler. 
and they, they, they do art pencils as well. And then I also have a, a, an iPad and I use, you know, the Apple Pencil that comes with it. I'm, I'm not really keen on the iPad. I don't use it very much. The, the Apple Pencil is really hard on the screen. Well, when you, when you use it on the screen, it's really slippery. Plus, it makes you know, sort of a loud noise when you, hit, when you touch the screen, you have a little click. Whereas the, uh, the S pens have sort of a soft tip and they have friction between the glass and the, uh, and the tip. And it feels more natural. It feels like you're drawing on paper or painting on canvas. Uh, you can get a screen protector for, for an iPad. I have one of those. It makes it feel a little bit more like paper. And you can get special tips. But just, just the cost of the whole system is, uh, I, I find it a little too high. I was looking at your portraits and your portraits have an interesting style and you, you seem to do a lot of portraits. I like your portraits. They, uh, the style that you use is, seems very consistent. How did you develop that style? I, I developed that style just by working. It sort of just seemed to come out of me. Uh, I think if I did my portraits on, you know, if I wasn't a digital artist, my style would be a bit different. Like, different. Uh, there are some tools that I tend to use when I'm doing portraits digitally. Um, uh, smudge tools and blending tools. Uh, I think my portraits would be a lot looser if I were uh, doing them with acrylics and oils. I, I, I tend to be a little bit tight. Uh, I, I, I like the person to really look like the person. Uh, I, I try to I, I try to be sort of photorealistic, but not to the point where it, you can't tell that a person did it. How big is your consideration of style? Does the style impact your 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 specific style? Does it impact your work at all? Do you consider it? I, I, I do consider it, but sometimes I try to change my style based on the type of work that I'm doing. And lately I've been trying to come up with a little bit looser, uh, more painterly style. Um, uh, but, but I always tend to come back to a little bit more tight style. Uh, uh, I, I, I try to sim I, I tend to simplify things. That, that just seems to be embedded in me, so. And what subjects interest you and, uh, and why? Uh, people interest me. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a series of street people, uh, slowly but surely. Um, I, 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 I just like, I just like doing people, trying to get the character to show through. I also like places. Uh, places that I visit, um, I, I love the ocean, I love Maine, Florida, uh, I love the West, uh, Wyoming, Montana, uh, and, and the West Coast, Oregon, and, and, and Seattle, uh, and, and, and Italy. Uh, just, I just love the different lights, the different feelings, the different landscapes, in, in, in all those different places. Um, you, you can tell you can tell a main scene if it's on the water from a Florida scene that's on the water just r real quickly I think. Uh, you mentioned you and your wife met Claire Gagnon up in Quebec City that's recently. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah, she invited us up to come visit her when she was on vacation. Uh, we we did some drawing. She, she was on Ile de Orleans. I don't think I pronounced that right, but it's an island right outside of Quebec City, big giant island in the St. Lawrence River. Uh, I really got influenced by that place uh, and also Quebec City. Uh, all the churches, the, the farms, the, the, the St. Lawrence River. Uh, I, I, I did a bunch of sketches while I was up there and Claire introduced us to a, a painter from Quebec um, and we went uh, plein air painting and drawing with him for one day.
Recognition is uh, an important part of of what you do as an artist. You know, you, uh, you like to get some kind of uh, some kind of uh, feedback for for the work that you do. How do, how do you approach that? Well, I, 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 well, I, I the, when I first approached it, I didn't have a studio or anything like that. I, uh, I was working from home. I, I guess I had a studio at home, but uh, I, I know I, I was. I knew I had to make the leap someday, and so about three years ago, the All uh, Gallery had a call for art for a show called Faces, and I had happened to be working on some portraits, so I had a bunch of pieces ready to go, and I took the leap and I I went into that show, um, and then shortly after that, Claire Gagnon Gagnon. Uh, suggested that I apply here to the at the brush and I, I did I had to get juried in uh, that that gave me some recognition that the, the the other artists here at the brush appreciated my work thought I would fit in and so now I have a studio here and I try to enter as many shows as I can each year it's not it's a limited number because I'm not doing this full time uh, uh, I, I probably put at least 40 hours a week into it, but it's still not really, it's not the, the way I make money, so. Yeah. But uh, art is still a really important part of your life. Oh, very important. Yeah. It's, become, it's become as important as it was back in college. So I want to mention that uh, I will have links to Tom's website and Instagram feed in the description of this video. And if you want to see Tom's work, I recommend going to his events page where he lists his current exhibits. Uh, you can also see him at the Brush Gallery. He has a studio here. Uh, I will also put links to the uh, galleries that he belongs to, among them Arts League of Lowell and the Brush. The Brush is right down the street from ALL. And um, I'll also put those in, uh, links to those in the description. Uh, is there anything else that I missed, Tom? Uh, really appreciate the time you spent with me. Uh, well, one thing I'd like to bring up uh, is that Claire Gagnon is a was really influential in bringing me out of my my art shell uh, when she was uh, during during COVID. She offered free classes, and I took classes with her. And like I said before, she's the one that suggested I apply at the brush. Uh, also, I'm, I'm starting to teach some digital art classes. I'm going to be doing an art in the park with the national parks on uh, July 9th at 11 a.m. So will people find information about your classes on your website? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'll, I'll put that on the events page. Actually. Okay. Um, I also want to mention that you and Claire Gagnon have a joint show, which will be running from June 21st through July 16th. July 16th at the uh, Greenwall Gallery at the Arts League of Law. Yes. Which will feature uh, scenes from Quebec City. Yes. So that should be a very interesting show. Yeah, it's been fun preparing for that. Well, actually, since since I got back from my trip to Quebec, I've been working on a lot of pieces of, of Quebec, yeah. and, and some of them will be in, in the show. Great. It'll be great to see that. And uh, Tom, thanks again for the time. Thank you, Ed. This was fun.